1991, the rave scene was exploding and the Prodigy were halfway up the UK singles charts with Charlie. But on the flip side of Charlie was the breakbeat hardcore anthem, Your Love. And that's where you could find Liam Howlett's highly influential piano line. Now, occasionally I've heard critics complain that Prodigy producer Liam Howlett relied too heavily on samples and wasn't that great creatively. I say those people don't have a clue. But I'd go further than that. I'd say that The Prodigy was so ahead of the game that even their debut album, The Experience, is such a masterpiece that every modern day producer should go back and really study it. Now that's a huge claim, I know, but let me show you what I mean, starting with the Your Love piano. Now, piano lines in dance music date back to the 1980s, but aside from a handful of anthems, most dance music piano lines were pretty generic. Now the standard way of doing things was alternating between one note in the left hand and then three notes in the right hand, this kind of thing. But Liam Howlett understood something that the vast majority of producers at the time really didn't have a clue about. In fact, I'd say most producers today still don't understand this. I'm talking about the power of juggling pain in the form of dissonance with pleasure in the form of harmony. Okay, that's a ridiculous example. You're probably wondering what I'm on about. A classic example of this is the piano line in Strings of Life by Rhythm is Rhythm. The basic principle here is that some of the notes thrown into the piano sequence are quite uncomfortable and that creates a tension. So when there's chords that don't have those notes, there's a sense of relief and that boosts the pleasure of what's there. So you get tension and then release and it enhances the feeling of the harmony that's in the piano sequence. Let me show you. Now that's pretty nice and it's definitely on the soulful, jazzy side of the spectrum. But what Liam Howlett managed to do with the Your Love piano is create a tension in a much more subtle way. Firstly, let's look at the opening chords. That's interesting. He starts with one chord, an F sharp minor, and he quickly moves to another chord, a C sharp minor. Now if he hadn't done that, it would have sounded like this. That's definitely more bland, but because he did do that, it really grabs your attention at the start of the sequence. And another thing, the opening chords are F sharp minor into C sharp minor. Now, that would imply that we're in the key of C sharp minor, but Howlett then moves into an F sharp major, which is not in the key of C sharp minor and in so doing creates another source of tension, it's called a borrowed chord. Anyway, here's how it would sound if it went back to the F sharp minor instead of to the F sharp major, keeping it strictly inside the C sharp minor key signature. Again, that makes it more bland and more generic and less interesting. Now look, I'm not saying that Liam Howlett is like some super genius. It's just dance music for goodness sake, it's called Your Love. I'm sure he didn't think that deeply about it. But even so, he managed to craft a record that still gets played today. It's catchy, it's memorable, it's easy to digest and in fact, after the main riff has played out, Howlett goes back into a piano section that's even more jazzy, it has even more tension and release, and even more flair. He starts playing notes in groups of three, which was really unusual at the time, and then he ramps up the dissonance and the tension in such a way that it really shows a keen musical ear. And to be fair, this was at a time when if you heard a decent piano on a hardcore record, chances are it was sampled from somewhere else. The Prodigy, on the other hand, never sampled a piano line, not once. And of course, the Prodigy are known to have used many, many samples in the majority of their tracks. However, when they used those samples, they used them in a very creative way with a very strong musical sense at the foundations. Now, I'm not some Prodigy fanboy, it's not that. It's just that as a producer and an engineer, when I recognize quality, I pay attention. And if it was only your love, I might never have noticed. But the thing is, that quality has been a running theme throughout the Prodigy's evolution. And on top of that, you can clearly hear Prodigy influences across the dance music world 
from the early 90s right up until the present day. In fact, one of my favourite hardcore anthems is Far Out by Sons of a Loop the Loop era. Have a listen to this Your Love inspired piano line. Now, I'm not saying it copies Your Love, not at all, but it is inspired by Your Love. You'll see what I mean. And that's far from the only example. In 1992, the Prodigy put out Fire, the Sunrise version, which featured a sampled piano. Actually, it's just a sampled chord. Liam Howlett himself played the chord on a keyboard and then sampled that one chord and then re-triggered it inside the sampler to produce this very kind of springy, ravey sound. And because he sampled a major chord, every chord in that piano sequence is a major chord. Now this is something that's quite unusual. There's normally only three major chords in a key signature, so any other chords that are played in the major are technically outside of the key signature. But Liam Howlett had the musical sense to turn that into a high-paced, topsy-turvy, up and down, in and out, musical roller coaster of tension and release. And I might be going out on a bit of a limb here, but I have a strong suspicion that that major piano style of playing in Fire by The Prodigy may have been one of the main influences behind The Slammer by DJ Chrome and Mr. Time, which is one of my favourite all-time old-school tracks. Anyway, back to The Prodigy. Their final breakbeat hardcore track to feature a hands in the air piano was Wind It Up Rewound in 1993. Now, the original Wind It Up on the Prodigy Experience album in 1992, that had a pretty jolly little piano on it to begin with. But looking at the differences between the piano in the original version and the piano in the rewound version gives us an insight into Liam Howlett's process. There are two things that really stand out to me about the Wind It Up Rewound piano. The first thing is that every chord from the original Wind It Up piano sequence is given a new tension. So instead of starting with a major chord, in the rewound version he starts with a suspended fourth to create some tension that resolves back to the major. And he uses this kind of tension and release motion for all four chords in the piano on the rewound version. And the other thing that strikes me about the piano on the rewound version is that when I came to do my reconstruction, I noticed that I could only get close to the sound on the record when I was very careful about velocity levels. That is to say, some notes are played harder than others. And I believe the point of this is to highlight certain notes in the sequence so that it doesn't just feel like blocks of chords. But it's almost like there's a melody sitting on top of the chord sequence. Now I don't know for a fact that Liam Howlett used Velocity to achieve that, perhaps he had two separate piano tracks, perhaps he had a layer on some of the notes, I'm not too bothered about how he did it, I just know to get as close as I got, that's how I did it. Certain notes are louder than the rest of the notes, and here's the result. (laughs) 